Over the last few years, one of the really big wish list items for the Nintendo Switch has been Joy-Cons that are styled after the GameCube controller, one of Nintendo's most unique and surprisingly actually very successful and comfortable controller designs. And this year we've actually had a couple of them finally release with the Nixie Wizard and the Doyoki GameCube style controller from Binbok. Having spent some time individually with each of these controllers and then trying them out back to back while also side by side with a original official GameCube controller, uh, I've had gotten some thoughts together in terms of how they compare to one another, as well as the very controller that they are based on. And I've actually found surprisingly that there are quite a few things they have in common, but there are also some key differences in how each one feels uh, and what might be a better fit for you. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. One thing I do feel is important to disclose real quick, uh, I have individually reviewed both of these controllers and neither of those videos were sponsored videos. Uh, however, for the Nixie specifically, I did do a sponsored post a couple months back where I announced the new color options it became available in, uh, which included black and silver along with this baseline purple. So that is a video I did in the past working with them. Uh, as far as my dedicated reviews for these controllers go though, uh, that stuff has not been part of sponsored content. So with that out of the way, what do these controllers each have to offer? Well, again, they are both Joy-Cons that are meant to mimic GameCube style controllers. There are a couple differences in how they've both approached this from a shape standpoint. In particular, the Joyoki has gone for a method of keeping the middle body as thin as regular Joy-Cons, which does give it a nice kind of layout relative to the Switch body when you're using it in handheld mode. Uh, the Nixie, on the other hand, has opted to be more almost along the lines of a Wavebird style controller, where it actually has a pretty thick mid body, uh, including a thicker middle piece that joins them together. And while this looks great actually for the controller together like this, uh, when used in handheld mode you do notice quite how thick these controllers are compared to the main tablet body. Not something that is actually a problem, but I do think visually there's just something really nice about the way the Doyoki comes together with it. As far as the physical comfort of holding these Joy-Cons go, the experience is very similar because at the end of the day you're actually focused on just holding them by their hand grips. Obviously they're both using the same ABXY style layout as the official GameCube controller. One of the things that surprised me especially when using the controller side by side, uh, is how similar these buttons feel. As far as the tension, force, and the kind of crispness of the buttons go, both of them have that kind of third-party button feeling where there's just that a little bit of extra pressure and resistance compared to a lot of OEM-style controllers. Uh, both of them, when you press them very rapidly, have that very light feeling like it could stick for a moment. They're pretty much the same. Uh, stick tension is one area where they are a little bit different. Both of them feel looser compared to the official GameCube controller, which in my mind is a little bit of a downside compared to what they're trying to mimic. I like having a decent bit of tension to the stick, so that little bit of looseness I'm not as big of a fan of. Uh, of the two, the Doyoki does feel like it has a little more tension. It's not a massive difference, but when I'm moving the sticks around on each one, there is just a little more snapback and tension feeling in the Doyoki compared to the Nixie. One other really important difference when it comes to the sticks is that the Nixie Wizard is making use of Hall Effect sensor sticks, whereas the Doyoki is using more traditional ones. Uh, this has been a really hot topic this past year, so if you are worried about stick drift and you'd like to avoid it, that is a big plus in the Nixie Wizard side. D-pads are another area where there's some light difference. Both of these controllers opted for having larger D-pads than the original GameCube controller, which is an upgrade in my mind. Uh, the Nixie has a D-pad that has kind of a gloss finish, whereas the Doyoki has a matte finish. Personally, I do like the feeling of the matte finish more. Also, in terms of the feeling of the D-pads, the Nixie controller does have a little bit of clickiness to it. It's not a clicky D-pad, but there is a bit of a clear button press feeling when you're hitting one of the four directions, uh, whereas the Doyoki feels a bit closer to a more traditional D-pad that has that softer kind of register and in my mind does feel a little bit better for things like rolling inputs. When it comes to button feel, the one area of these that are definitely the most different are the shoulders uh, compared to each other and compared to the GameCube controller. Obviously the original GameCube controller had its LR and a single Z button that's been flipped around on these ones to reflect the modern layout of Switch style controllers where you have the ZL and ZR in the back acting like triggers and then two shoulder buttons in front of those that are just L and R. Neither of these controllers uses the style like the original GameCube controller where you actually have that travel distance for pressing at different heights uh, and then the final click register when you press down all the way which depending on the kind of game you play it might matter how much you're pulling back or it might just be important to press the button these ones all opt for simple button presses because ultimately that's all that matters on the switch they are also different though in terms of how these buttons feel with the nix controller going for something that feels more along the lines of a mouse click and you can even hear that it has that clicky feedback whereas the doyoki controller goes for something that's a little more common in a lot of official and third-party controllers 
colors where it's a more traditional softer button press. This is something that I think, especially for shoulder buttons, comes down a little bit more to personal preference and what kind of games you're playing. Uh, generally, I do like having that kind of mouse click register on buttons more, so that is something about the Nixie that I enjoy compared to the Doyoki. But I think it is important to highlight that ultimately this is something that's a little bit more of a preference rather than a one is flat out better than the other. Now, obviously being controllers for the Switch and not actually for the original GameCube, uh, as well as being third-party controllers, there are a number of additional functionalities and features worth going over. Uh, both of them feature turbo buttons. Both of them feature a pair of remappable back buttons that are located on the grips of the controllers. Uh, Feeling-wise, these are very similar. I will say that the ones on the back of the Nixie, I don't really like the feeling of as much. Uh, there's kind of this lightly mushy feeling to it that doesn't always feel like a clear button press to me, uh, whereas the Doki does have a much cleaner register for when you know you've pressed it. They also have some swappable physical parts, but have gone for completely different things. The Doki gives you the ability to remove the top of the stick heads and replace them with one of three different designs. Uh, for the sake of being weird right now, I've actually swapped them to where you have uh, the more traditional left side one on the right and the more traditional right side nub on the left. The nub option on the left side is honestly kind of weird to me, uh, but I just like the way it looks as being something kind of weird to show off. But if you want more traditional stick head options on both of these, you can do that. If you want to have the very GameCube style kind of nub head on the C-Stick, you can do that as well. I will note that compared to the official GameCube controller, the C-Stick nub on this one is smaller. It's just not quite as large. And I think the reason for that is because they were trying to mimic the same thickness as what the actual stick heads have. It's still large enough to be useful, but it does feel a little awkward in comparison to the official Z-Stick. The Nixie, on the other hand, does not have removable stick heads, and that is one of the changes compared to the GameCube controller as well. Uh, it does not have a C-Stick nub, instead relying on a more traditional stick head for that right-hand side. What it does give the option to swap, though, that is interesting, is you can actually replace the gates for these. Uh, something different about the GameCube controller compared to a lot of other options out there is that it actually has an octagonal gate, so it gives you a very clear sense of when you're pointing in one of the four cardinal directions, or in a diagonal, whereas the vast majority of controllers just make use of circle gates. So if that's something that you would prefer to use depending on the kind of game that you're playing, uh, you do have the option to actually remove these gates and swap over for a circular design instead, whereas the Doyoki gives you the ability to swap out the sticks, but you are always stuck with that eight-way gate. Both these controllers are capable of rumble. The Doyoki does also give you the ability to program different rumble intensities. Uh, the differences between them aren't quite as large as I would like, but you do have the option to customize that, which is not present on the Nixie. Both of these controllers also offer the ability to do motion controls. Both these controllers can also turn the system on from sleep when being used wirelessly. And neither of them have the ability to read Amiibo, which is pretty common amongst third-party controllers. Not the biggest loss in my mind. Now, before I get to kind of some final versus head-to-head -head thoughts as far as how I enjoy both these controllers, I think one point I want to make right away is that uh, while I think it's cool that we are getting some options for offering that kind of GameCube-style controller in Joy-Con format, I don't really feel like either of these have quite hit the target mark. You know, there's some neat additional features and things they've added, uh, and I think at the end of the day, as far as something that works, they are both options, uh, but they just ultimately end up paling in comparison to the controller that they're trying to mimic. The button feel and trigger style and everything just isn't really there. Uh, I understand some of the choices were made here in order to make it line up a little bit more with modern day style controllers. They're also trying to get feature lists in there with things like having the back buttons. Uh, but at the end of the day, in terms of just feeling like the controller that they're evoking the name of, I think they both really fall short of that, which is also a little disappointing considering the fact that both of these are third party controllers that are unlicensed uh, and both of them are charging basically official pro controller prices. Uh, you know, traditionally, a lot of times when you look at third-party controller options, they tend to offer something that's a little bit cheaper compared to official options. And while these are a little bit cheaper compared to buying, say, a Joy-Con set, uh, compared to a pro controller, they come pretty close, with the Nixie asking for $70 and the Doyoki asking for $65. Uh, to sum up what I think are really the biggest differences between these controllers worth noting, uh, again, the swappable parts are different. Uh, I think that the swappable stick heads are something that are a little more common for people to look into using, uh, although the swappable gate on the Nixie I think is really attractive if you want to use these for all your games and not just necessarily games where you think a GameCube controller makes sense, because while the eight-way gate is great for some games, it's not a perfect fit for a lot of other titles out there where maybe a circle gate feels a little more comfortable, especially for things like rolling inputs. Again, the shoulder buttons also feel different on them. I don't think there's a clear winner here. It's more of a matter of preference. I like the clicky style of the Nixie, but I don't think it's necessarily the best fit for everyone. Uh, and while both controllers do feature back buttons, I do like the feeling of the back buttons on the Doki more. And so if that's something that you're planning on making extensive use of, I think that is important to note. 
And again, one edge the Nixie Wizard has is that it does make use of Hall Effect sensor sticks, which the Daoki does not. Uh, and if color styling matters to you, as far as these both go right now, the Daoki only comes in the indigo style purple, uh, also with a mismatched black bridge between them, whereas the Nixie does come in that traditional purple, as well as platinum and black. So those are my thoughts on both these GameCube style controllers. Neither of them really live up to the original just yet, but if you want something that's as close as it gets right now available on the market, outside of maybe trying to mod and hack your own, uh, these are the choices right now and what they each have to offer. If you are interested in grabbing either of these, I do have links posted down below in the description. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button to let me know, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys later.